opinion regarding this because there's two hadiths the Prophet ﷺ that are mentioned on the Prophet ﷺ. One of them is the Prophet ﷺ said, Men messa dhakaruhu fil yatawadda. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever uh, touches his private part or his or her private part in, in the meaning it, it means men and women, then they should make wudu. Okay? So we know that then touching the private part breaks your wudu. Okay? Everybody's clear. Everybody understands. Good. Do you have to make wudu? Good. Babe. And then the fifth thing. Listen up. Listen up. We're almost finished because we mentioned six things. Here's the fifth thing. Here's the fifth thing. The fifth thing is if you eat the meat, camel meat. You eat camel meat. Like otka. It can be otka and it can be in any kind of camel meat. Okay? Jazakallah khairan. So any way that you eat camel meat, no matter how it's cooked, you have, wudu. you have to make wudu after it. If you eat camel, you have to make wudu. Just listen first. Okay? And we'll talk about it. We'll explain those things later. Okay, so again, you have to make wudu. And the main reason, first and foremost, is because the Prophet Wasallam was asked about it. A man, uh, this is the hadith of Jabir ibn Samra, and a rajalin sa'ala nabiyu sa'ala nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anna tawaddu min lahum al-ghanam, qala in shatta tawadda wa in shatta la ta tawadda. Qala, أنا التوضع من لحوم الإبل قال نعم توضع من لحوم الإبل okay and this hadith was collected in Muslim so in this hadith a man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about uh, making wudu from the meat of a of a like a a, a no, not a camel, a uh, goat, from the meat of a goat or or like a sheep or like this, okay? So the man asked about this, and the Prophet ﷺ said, if you want to, make wudu, and if you don't want to, don't don't make wudu. So it's up to you, That it, meaning that it is not something you have to do. You do not have to, if you eat the meat of sheep or, or goat meat, you do not have to make wudu, okay? That's what the Prophet ﷺ said in the first part of the hadith. Then in the second part of the hadith, the man said, should we make wudu if, uh, if we eat the meat of a camel? And the Prophet wasallam said, yes, make wudu from the meat of the camel. Hmm? From? from eating the meat of the camel. Oh. Okay, so listen up. So again, that shows us what? That we have to make wudu if we eat camel's meat. That's from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And the wisdom behind that, the Prophet ﷺ knows, uh, knew uh, the wisdom behind that. We may not know all the wisdom. Some scholars and, and people say, I mean, when you eat camel meat, you also find that it's a very strong meat. And it leaves, it tends to um, seem like it comes out of your skin, the, the potency of the meat. It's very strong, a strong scented meat. Okay, camel meat is very strong. And Allah knows best why we have to make wudu. But first and foremost, in anything, if it comes from a, a sound hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we, we believe in that and we operate in our lives by that. We practice that hadith. And that comes from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in authentic hadith. So that way we know that camel meat does what? It, if we eat camel meat, it what? It breaks your wudu. It breaks your wudu. khairan. Good. And the last thing, the last thing I want to mention, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from this. The last thing is if a person leaves Islam, okay, and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. But if someone were to, for example, they said they did something and they did not be, they left Islam. They're not a Muslim anymore. Then they decide, and they were in wudu. Then they decide they want to be a Muslim again. Okay, and then they take their shahada again and, and make toba or repentance from whatever made them leave the fold of Islam. Then they would have to, before salat, they would have to make wudu again. Why? Because leaving Islam also breaks your wudu. 
Okay, leaving uh, Islam breaks your wudu. Uh, and the evidence for this, or it comes from the verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَكْفِرْ وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدْ حَبِتَ عَمَلُهُ That whoever disbelieves in Iman, you know, that they reject Iman, that they disbelieve in Islam, then this nullifies their deeds. This nullifies their deeds. It makes their deeds no longer, uh, they lose all their good deeds. Okay? So this is, those are the six things that break our wudu. Again, just to briefly go over it, so that way we uh, can recap, is that the first one is when you, uh, is that if something comes out of your private parts, the second thing is, that if there's some something filthy and impure that comes from your body, najasa, or if you lose your mind, that's the third one. Uh, the fourth one, and that could be in, in going into deep sleep or uh, through losing one's consciousness or becoming uh, insane. And the fourth one is that if you touch your private parts, and the fifth one is if you eat the meat of the camel. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. And the sixth one, I'm sorry, is that if someone leaves the fold of Islam. Oh, yeah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.